what was the vision that you had going to the Ghana Maritime? Well, in terms of vision for any position that I take is to see whether I can manage the assets of the state to have an impact on the people. And so it is not about maritime per se. And to be honest with you, I had no ba maritime background, and it's not like I even knew the name. If somebody came and said, it's a kind of maritime authority. It, it's a no, it was a no name, no branded. But I said, OK, I told the president, I can change it. So I decided to do that. And so it, it's not so much about what maritime is, whether it was a juicy company or whether it's a, it was a company that was struggling. And to me, if I could take it and change it, that is the way a measurement, that's where performance is mm. measured. But you couldn't achieve this vision of yours, obviously. Um, I achieved. You did? What do you mean by Within the two achieved? years? Well, of you tell I me. Did. Of course I did. Of course, I, I think it's a, uh, even in the interview uh, with my board, I said that we will double and quadruple this, the revenue of this organization. When I took over the organization, I believe the, the first revenue was about 39 or 40 million. The second, the year that I took over, I moved it to about 99 million to 400. I doubled it more than double. Okay, beyond that, we did a lot of, we impacted a lot. We bought uh, all the things that we have to do, offices set up and, and cars that have been, uh, what do you call, gone through procurement, but because we didn't have money, uh, they were even taking it back when we bought about 17 cars. The company was running, with was nothing in there. So in terms of achievement, I wouldn't want to sit here, but, but the records are there mm. that we move it from that. And the second year we move to 150. So it's all about protecting the purse of the state. And, and by managing and having value for money in terms of what we do, uh, we're able to reserve money, increase uh, the, the, the salaries of people, promoted uh, over 60 people or 70 or 100 people. Everybody was put on a proper way. We had a committee to make sure that people are reviewed who have been sitting there 10 years. There were drivers who even just by having one accident couldn't move the next step for 10 years. <laughs> you know, so we did a fair play without regard to party politicking. We never took it and called, oh, you are NPP or NDC, you go here, go there. No. We did, I, I went there with the vision that I believe in Ghana. You could imagine, I had a, my secretary, I worked for my predecessor for about 10 years. But when I went in, I took her to continue working mm. because it's a public servant. Mm. Many people did it. Why are you doing that? This is this is NDC person, the secretary will pass information. I said, why? He's just a public servant. And I can assure you, and if you want to do, look at anybody, other NDC on PP that will go and meet such a thing <laughs> and will accept the lady to be there. But I believe in Ghana. I mm. believe that he's a worker. And I believe that you can change the circumstance of people. They are willing to support you. And I did. But you made the headlines. Yes. I Big. Yes. Because of the renovation of your official um, residence. House. Exactly. And then we were told you had installed 11, 13 maybe air conditioners. 11 air conditioners? Yes. <laughs> and the whole cost for the refurbishment was about a billion. 900,000. Are you talking a billion as an old school <laughs> a billion the problem is this mm -hmm. we didn't have a residence the people think that we didn't have one okay my predecessor was in a rented property in Hacho. so when i came i said we must try to find residence because it cost too much to be paying all these four thousand dollars and the rest within uh, two years you would have paid for it if we put our own. So we went to Works and Housing Minister and applied. So they wanted to put the building in my name as a government worker. They started, they didn't have the money towards delaying. So I talked to the minister, I said, okay, take the bill of quantities. 
when I say bill of quantities, you understand, is mm -hmm. the estimates of the PWD prestige, and then go and build. We took that with the records here, and then we just call uh, three of our people that are on our list to do the, what do you call that, bidding or, mm -hmm. yeah. So we gave it to the people. But the building that was sitting on that property was a two bedroom old colonial wooden house. So obviously, the topic that will be put on in terms of what is it that you are going to do is not a fresh land. So the subject matter was renovation of a two bedroom, whatever it was. But that was actually transforming the two bedroom. No, no breaking it down, and no. But what I'm saying is that the so this was a this this was a building. So this the, you're actually putting up a building. We are putting up two buildings uh, okay. with a basement, five bedrooms, two separate buildings, five bedrooms, uh, two separate living rooms. One for a, res, a receiving a guest from the maritime whatever, and one for where I reside as director general. general. And for eleven air conditions that you made so much noise of. I had called it mediocrity because you didn't do any benchmarking. You didn't ask how much, how many air conditioning that Gapuha, Cocoa Board, Goyle was next to me, how many of them? Maybe including some of your own small, small boys who are, who, who are uh, what do you call you, uh, newsmakers. They have probably 15 in their own. So before you say something is in excess, you must have done some benchmarking and say that are these people having two? And for the room that I told you, my dear, on the outer one had a four, and in my own, every room had one air condition. One woman even sent the comment that ah, this man, this whole big room has one air condition. So that is what we did, including the basement. 900,000. And you have a former vice presidential uh, building construct, thirteen million dollars still there. I don't see you talking about it, and it is quite unfair. And also, when you talk about the building, I said it was the bill of quantities that I have here. It was done by PWD Prestige, and they supervised it. So, why do you think there was so much talk and concentration on that one building? Because you, the media, you make yourself like. Uh, a U.S. policeman who arrests a doctor and say you didn't tell me, sir. <laughs> the media was all over after Kwame Meusu. Oh, uh, Papa, no, they didn't speak well. Uh, one can hear. I saw one woman in one of these organizations who would say that, ah, how can that man have uh, four air conditioning in his bedroom? What kind of people are we? So. For the media, you, you get on Kwame Yusu because uh, he didn't beg us. The people who are corrupt will say, okay, I'm sorry, they hear me senior members and whatever. What is corruption about this? 11 air conditioning, my dear, let me tell you, they all cost 21,000 Ghana cities. If it's anybody who wants to be not value for money, he will charge 60, 100, I'm an alert. 11 air conditions. Is that something you media have to spend your time talking about when we have children knocking doors at 10 p.m.? Are people's car with a risk and I don't see you championing that? Could it be that that press conference? Yes. And the way you That I didn't beg you. The way you, you didn't. When you say you didn't <laughs> beg us. Because I because be, be be for... say, I beg you, sir, I'm sorry, and this and that. There was nothing for me to be, because everything was done Pay the books. And if your job was to ask why I'm you, it didn't bother me because I am a Ghanaian that is willing to serve government. It's not a job. So when you begin to do these type of things, eventually, the good guys who are willing to serve government, as opposed to you have only people who are looking for a job, and the economy will not be the way that we want it to be. So it is not true that you were involved in financial mismanagement at the Ghana Maritime. What would be the financial mismanagement from what we talked about? The records are here from PWD. When they said the thing was 400, the people went there and did the 400. I was never involved in calling somebody who come and give us an estimate so that we, PWD, I can give you a copy, PWD Prestige. 
There's also the issue of... No, I don't want to make sure you understand the word financial mismanagement. How could that be a... I just want you to... How could that be a financial mismanagement? Mm. Our, our other people from the, the, the uh, other side, all right, they will call it corruption. But I can tell you, I am such a person that people know how much I care for what value for money. In this paper here, here, if they want to know, this is my predecessor who happened to live in a bungalow paid by us. He was building a property and had internet installed and paid by Ghana Maritime 150000 that is not even corruption, that is stealing. Because corruption can be defined in, in, in um, uh, uh, influences and, and, and all that. So you, you don't necessarily have to buy. This paid for, when you are already in a, a, a bungalow, paid by this thing, this thing, and it was published in the, uh, in the news. But do you care? No. Because he probably came and begged you guys. This is, I have just given you, and I'll give you a copy to go and see what you are going to do with it. That is the kind of unfair reporting you do to some of us. Your only complaint was that the man did that, oh, he was arrogant. I didn't sleep under the carpet. I didn't call you, sir. So you started that, you continue to talk. It can never be a financial mismanagement. There's also the other issue of you allowing a relative to provide meals. There's what you call the conflict of interest. That is why I want to say that this one here is not conflict. This is stealing. <laughs> the conflict of interest is the same thing. Just like when you guys go into these meetings and media house and you get all those envelopes and get yourself 500 and 200. It's all corruption. <laughs> and you do that all the time. Maybe because you're underpaid, you don't have intention. That is corruption. Some of them will come to listen to these things and they are constantly how it will finish and you get your money to go. Okay, so when you begin to talk of things, <laughs> see what yourself do unto others, the thing that you yourself <laughs> would like others to do for you. We, I had a, 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 a hotel, well, well, a family hotel, so they paid. And people were buying food from there. And as we sit here, people continue to buy food from there everywhere. And then we go through tender committees. And, and we qualified. And it was said to the board. The board approved it. And they sell normal food. But you know what some people have said? And that conversation is even continuing with this latest uh, uh, Ejapa deal. Some people have said, why do you allow people who are very close to you or businesses that you have interest in to take part in something that you're spearheading. It's the perception out there. So okay. this may not be true, yeah. but the fact that the business is so close to you just allows people to perceive that so. you're, you're yeah. So, and, and that's, that's I, conflict of interest, isn't I, it? I, I think I have said that, that it is when you go through, you have the right to disclose to an organization. Uh, and again, selling, uh, 1,000 food is what is going to make me something. No, it is their choice. It was their proximity. Uh, workers there, they eat from my place because it is close to them. So the board is aware, and then everything that went through competitively. So you talk about conflict of interest and talk about Japan issue. I, 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 I don't go to the other. I think much has been talked about to explain to you, but I'm saying that for my part, yes. If I have to do it again, will I? No. But there's nothing financial mismanagement. But if there was nothing wrong with it. Why are you saying if you had to do it again, you will not? Oh, because of the perception issue that you just said. We, we are human beings. If I have to do I won't do it again because there was nothing that I... It didn't click <laughs> to my mind uh, that there is something that's supposed to be going on. There's no overbilling. As a matter of fact, sometimes I question you and your sincerity when I say you, the media. Somebody takes up a paper and on top it says, please attach fine meetings and whatever. And somebody writes on next of it, the guy who wrote it, Mr. Oten, uh, Ohimin Tinasa, uh, uh, the former uh, finance guy. And he wrote next to it, eight people eat 10,000. And nobody even had the, the, the sense to say, oh, let us invest. Does it make sense? When you read the document, which was posted by A+, plus, it was clear. Meetings, over 165 meetings, over six, seven meetings, all backed up by the data. He took the top and said, 
and say and make it look at our road ten people, it uh, eight people with ten thousand. My dear, would that be possible? You, but you didn't bother to do any investigation. Your job, ah, then a papa no your snow. Why did he do this? You did you don't do your job. Instead of reporting and making Ghanaians get information, you want to make the news. And so that your papers and your stations can be watched. So you see you sometimes you don't even sit back. Ah, does it really make sense? None of you had the opportunity to go back and say, this man is gone. Let us see the background and see whether all these were right. Benchmarking, I told you, check with Gapuhas and the rest and see whether it's only Ghana Maritime the high level in the Some have 15, 16, and the rest. You haven't done that. Are you, are you pained because listening to you, you thought the media was not fair to you? On the media side, you are not fair to me and many others. But no, I'm not in pain. I'm a very happy person. When I go to see my dad and my dad, <laughs> Do you regret <laughs> accepting that appointment to Ghana Maritime? Absolutely not. I made an impact. People continue to flow in letters and whatever and gifts and even this drawing there was brought by somebody who just, I have admired for what I have done for Ghana Maritime. Both NDC and NPP. Workers every day. I will get about 10 calls saying how you are doing, sir. I am very happy I have made contribution to my nation. I don't regret, not because of the noise that you made, but those are bound to happen to you in life. My guest is Kwame Owusu, director, former director general of Ghana Maritime. When we come back, we will talk about the GRA. We'll talk about family and friends also. <laughs> you were going to be board chair of the Ghana Revenue Authority. Did you ever step there? No. What happened? Well, I think that you started making noise. <laughs> <laughs> I was asked by the president to uh, leave Ghana Maritama, so I resigned. I attended the resignation. Did he give you reasons? Yes, to so that I could be appointed to go and chair uh, the Revenue Authority. So, so contrary to public opinion, mm -hmm. you didn't, you were not sacked from Ghana Maritime? Absolutely not. If people are sacked for what they have done wrong, if the president is very principled. He will come out and say the person should be prosecuted this and that. He gave me a fair appointment. How can I be sacked in the and midst of your talk? And the man who does appoint me again. It's not by default, because he knows who and what I am, and he knows my capabilities. Okay, so he didn't push you to resign because of all the commentary at the time? But I have just told you that if he wants me to resign, he won't do even immediate appointment. Mm. He will tell you, go and hide for a year or two before you come. <laughs> he immediately did the appointment. So he was clearly and he happy. Never, he was clear, he never clearly said, happy with you. But you can make the judgment. I don't have to. It is not about so what I'm happy. So I'm, happy. I'm wondering why that appointment couldn't hold then as board chair of the GRA. Well, when you started making noise, like any other, was some it people as started, the but the president was, was never panicked. CSOs. There was a number of CSOs, anti-corruption organizations. Oh, I mean that, that, that petition. Yes, I don't know where they petitioned to. They did all the petition at the Council of State. It didn't work because there is no element of all the things I've told you. They are common sense people. But when you talk about the anti-corruption, I remember in the, uh, after the appointment, I, I remember the yellow boy, uh, what do you call it? Um, yellow boy? Yeah. Uh, Franklin Kujo. Why do you call him the yellow boy? That's how I call him. That's how I knew him to be. He comes to my restaurant, I see, I said, that's the yellow boy. Now, when he makes a comments for somebody appointed to you, I say, oh, he's gonna go have a, a lot of air conditioning. See, a lot of people, you listen to, you call them anti-corruption. This guy, he's a land economy. He wanted to do land economy in tech. They finish, they never work in their life to impact on people, but they become policy makers because some of these organizations, that's how they live. And some of them, you go to see even how they live, you begin to wonder, and they don't have a paycheck, how do you live like this? But that is not what I am trying to see. They seem to know everything. And they will say, oh, Kwame also did that, Kwame also did that. And I challenge him the latter. I want him to come and see what he has done. 
So people even take a job that they can do. When we are going to appoint people to go and stabilize uh, the uh, Ghana CD uh, currency, and they invite him, oh, he's gladly to put his name there. You are land economy. Neither have you had a business. We do export. When dollar comes in, two and a half percent goes to the bank. He doesn't even have a pain to see what people do. So there is no, you say, oh, I am sorry. I want to stay anti. But he'll join. People, you are double standard. I, I, ref, I had so much of you talking, including them, if you do. So on uh, September 18, 2019, I wrote to the president to withdraw. He never, wait, he never called me and said, no. I said that then Mr. Harry was sick, the former chairman. He left the same February. So the place was going to be empty. So he quickly tell me, hand over and come so that I can get you to go and do this job for me. And he made the appointment. So it tells you that there is no corruptible issue in his mind mm. because he was given the document after they went through investigations and the rest. And when I saw people were talking and talking, it's not like I need a job. It is a public service. A chairman is not a paid job. So I wrote to him on September 18th and said, Mr. President, Ghana is bigger than any one person. And the economy has to move on, especially when we talk about revenue shortfalls and the rest. So please, I have been involved in other activity business, so let somebody else do it. When time comes in the future, I have to tell government that I have time, I will come back and do that. So that is what it was. And then by the 21st or so, they put in Professor Day. So you turned down the appointment? Yes. This is a letter, copy of the letter. Because of the what noise, you term the noise? The noise if making... If they were just noises, then why would well, you take no, it that you serious? You don't want to go into an organization where people have not been satisfied. Now, I think, I believe after I talk to you, if any media person has them, that will be quiet. But it looks like you say you didn't know Kwame Yosu until you heard Ghana Maritime. So today you are hearing the issues that we are talking about. And then you draw your conclusion. So I felt that I needed time for the public to know what the issues are. And it was not life and death for me. So I wrote, because I'm a businessman. I have other businesses that I'm doing. Mm. So I didn't have to stuck on having a political business card if I don't get this job. No. Would you accept a future appointment? I have not come to the conclusion, I said, but I will always, I said to my president, I am always ready to serve you in the conclusion of my letter. I said, I'm always ready to serve our party and country. Should there be a change in my circumstance? I'm forever grateful to you for this appointment and wish you well as always. When you say, should there be a change in your circumstance? I had written, I had other things that I'm doing, other export, I mean, international things that I had to do at mm -hmm. the time. So I thought that by the delay, I had to make a, a choice, and so I decided. Did you get a response from the presidency? Yeah, why? Is that, uh, why would that be? He said, fine, if you, yeah, there are other things to do, so. Mm. What's your relationship with the president? Some people have said that he's, he's, he really likes you. I think he respects me. People use the word like. There are people who cannot perform. And when they are like, then they are liking boys. <laughs> But I'm a performer. He respects me from energy advisor. He, uh, he was in touch with me. He knew of me. And we have stayed very close from that time, resolving issues and things like that. So I think it's on the basis of that. I would like to use the word respect more than like. He respect of my capability, or what he knows me that I stand mm. for. I think it's more of that one instead of that. Okay. When they like you, if you don't even qualify, they keep putting you there. But I think that he, he, he likes my, my background and I'm pretty good. He said, he said, please, Kwame, come and go and rescue this place for me. That was his exact words. Mm. So what did you quickly jump into? Because you've talked about the fact that you have a number of private businesses that you run. But I'm a businessman. I've always been a businessman since day one I came to this country. I mean, we run hotel, we do constructions. Uh, uh, my family, we are involved in export of uh, a free zone of uh, baby courts and there, which is a very big business. We have to get in touch. We I go to Malawi. We have a contract there for them to supply to our U.S. chain. We go to China. We go into Vietnam. So uh, there was a lot that we have to do to boost our organization. Uh, and I am very much involved with a lot of things. So I felt that at any point in time, it was more importantly, it was for the benefit of Ghanaians that from February coming up to, say, September or late August, Ghana must move on. Ghana is bigger than Kwame and, and we must move on so that the nation, national interest, I have enough 
when things are moving and I do my business, I like the environment. So I like to see that things move on, and that is why I decided, why don't I back up so that you can stop making noise? And you, you stop making noise. <laughs> and today you are here. <laughs> why did you agree to talk to us? <laughs> well, I agreed to talk to you on any issues that you wanted to talk about. I think the, the facts might be known. I think that uh, you probably, maybe you have regretted, you also decided you want to talk to me, uh, <laughs> that what you did was bad. But Kennedy Japan is your very good friend. You were at Long his time. 60th birthday. Long time. Since US. He was my small boy, my junior brother. Since US. Okay. We've been together for so long. Mm. He's got 19 children, he told me. How many do you have? I have, <laughs> I have three children. I, uh, I, I have three children. Okay. I, I don't have 19. So. One wife? One wife. <laughs> <laughs> I've been married since uh, 1981 in the U.S. My wife is an American. 1981? Yes. How, how many years is that? I don't know how many years. <laughs> but at least I've been able to hold on to marriage. Yeah, maybe you can give us a few tips. How do you hold on to marriage for this long <laughs> and not get bored? I think that uh, for me, what we do wrong is that women are not looking for big things. It's the little things mm. that we don't let them know. That's why sometimes you see a chief executive, the driver will take the wife away. <laughs> it's because you are trying to talk about big houses <laughs> You buy orange or uh, egg and say, Mama, I saw this on the road. And the, t the heart is touched. Oh. When our women even dress and they look pretty in the house, we don't tell them. There are a lot of things we, it's not a big thing. There are a lot of things that we don't do for women. And that is what I try to keep my relationship with mine. Hmm. So what are some of the little things that you've been doing? That's what I just told you. Oranges? Making sure, no, making sure that, oh, a part of it, yeah. The things that a driver will buy, I take that responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> I take that responsibility, you know, and make sure that I walk away from uh, controversial discussions. And I will say, yes, ma, go ahead and do that, and, and, and the rest. I mean, uh, I remember a uh, former NDC minister, he was a board member where I was a chairman, and he says, hey, was it? He said, Director, it's, you, you must keep your home. When you're, you're a very strong person, you debate, you challenge each man's and stuff. But when it comes to your family, your wife calls you, you say, yes, ma, go ahead and do it. Do whatever you think is right. And that is how I do it. Mm. I do not get involved in controversies. My wife is a foreigner, but we have been able to put our cultures aside and I've been able. It means, it, it means I'm open to ideas. And that is why I'm able to hold on to this long. Mm. That's nice. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Let's talk about your friendship with Ken again. Okay. <laughs> you welcome him to the club of 60s. Yes. Uh, I watched that clip. Yes. But not long after, well, after he recovered from COVID-19, he told <laughs> us that he got it from that encounter. Party, yes. Yes. Did you give him COVID-19? If I gave him COVID-19, then my blood might be strong. <laughs> But you know, know COVID-19, when you get it, you become frustrated, you don't know where you pick it. But I, I believe uh, none of the people there had a COVID-19. Okay, but you, you didn't, I, have, I know you didn't where, have COVID-19. Finally, I know where the source, where he got it from. Okay. I, it's not for me to disclose. It didn't happen where we were, mm -hmm. because none of us had it. Uh, what, what, what keeps your friendship, you and Ken? Ken is, well, <laughs> I mean, you're a very open person. Yes. I haven't known you for a very long time. Yes. Ken is really loud, isn't he? I mean, he is... Why are you asking me about <laughs> loudness? You know, that is... I'm just, I'm checking <laughs> what keeps the friendship. The way people think about your... When, when, when I was young, I used to see people who say, uh, oh, well, you know, I'm a good girl. And I said, that is a depend on how your mother sees it. When people are chasing girls when we were children, when you, are, you don't respond, you're a bad girl to the guy. And your mother is also wanting you not to respond. So depend on how you value the person and say that he's loud or not loud. Um, we, our friendship is, has been straight because we are straightforward. If he does something wrong, I do not. Behind the scenes, I'll call and scream and, and yell and, and the, the same frankness, the same thing you talk if it's bad, I'll call and talk to him and do it. But there are some people that is, 
the, the, the way they are. Uh, Ken is Ken. He's a very close brother of mine. He will continue to be. Uh, because you must take people as they are, mm -hmm. so long as you, you love them. And uh, we've been so close for a very long time. He respects me, and I've also reciprocity uh, given to him long. Mm. What's a typical day like for you? I mean, now that you're not doing public service. I, I work hard. I told you I'm very much involved. And I was here, but uh, I'm always, I, I used to go to uh, GMA about 7 o'clock. I, I only sometimes 10, 11, 12. That is my normal day. That is all the time for me. I sleep three hours a day, generally. Be about 2 a.m. I'll go by 5.30, I'm up. And then I will work. As you come to see me, I'll be here 10 o'clock, sometime 8 o'clock. I get busy, uh, do things. I don't do too much business, but I look at my businesses. I look at strategies to move on, and I, I, I make sure that I can put my things to hold my family mm. and, and to make sure that I you know, can feed up. How is your business doing? And uh, maybe the, well, maybe okay. businesses within this era, because there are a lot of businesses yeah. that are suffering. Uh, in the hospitality industry, it's completely out. But uh, we do the export of baby costs. People are having children all the time. So we are considered e-business. So even during the lockdown, we were shipping. Well, that's even when people make more babies. Yes, yes, maybe. yes. So they were buying. So for us, that aspect is good. Mm. And it has been good. Uh, so uh, I remember I talked to DHL chief executive. I said, what do you think? I said, oh, if not for the sickness, I hope the disease stays on. <laughs> because this is the time we are making more money. Mm -hmm. But we were affected in other areas, but we are involved in uh, construction type, and then our principal activity of family has been going on, there was not a stop. So mm -hmm. we, we, were, we were lucky in that regard. Mm -hmm. Any regrets generally in life? Absolutely not. See, I'm a very happy person. You have to be happy to be able to live long. You don't have to put things in you. As a matter of fact, like I said, the gentleman who did this all re reporting fabrications, he'll go on to have a share. His brother has lost his election, Tinasa of uh, Kade, and he himself is struggling. But that is how life is. You cannot let like pain. Life is about pain management. Mm. Life is pain management. He said, if you don't have all these, then there's no life. So you think it was a deliberate, somebody, this was a deliberate ploy. Somebody framed you, somebody put yeah, all of these on you. Yeah, but you could see that 28 people time. cannot eat 10,000 in a lunch in Ghana, <laughs> uh, which you didn't read that much because the topic was that, uh, Chief, please uh, find invoices of various, but you made it one invoice. But yes, because you know, he was one guy called uh, an PP guy, uh, who wanted the director generalship. And it wasn't given to him. It was the accountant who was colluding with my colleague, uh, Azuma. Uh, and, and so when I came in, we were asked to be investigated by, and he said that, oh, I'm the one who went to the president for us to have forensic audit. So the very first day that the auditors came in, asked him about what he do, his policy, oh, I don't have this, so we'll come back the next day. In that night, the place <laughs> was burnt. Nine year records, burned to ashes, carried from our country to his office, burned, pictures burned. But you still can't service. accuse him he was of being in the place. He was accused. It was introduced that he was accused of attorney general. He was accused. He's, a, he's an external. Uh, he was on record saying that, oh, uh, I, I have asked the fire department to make it that. How could anybody influence fire department to do that? But was he prosecuted? Uh, they are still on that. He traveled that he was sick. His, his brother uh, guaranteed. And, uh, so we're gonna, I'm going to pursue that. That's part.